Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. His mercy endureth forever. I'd like to welcome you all to the first Sunday service here at the Model Church of God. Those who are in-house, those who are streaming through Facebook or YouTube, I pray that this year will be a blessing for you. I pray that God's favor will always be with you. And I pray that God's grace will go with you always. Bless the Lord. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord. Show me your way.
Hallelujah. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Hallelujah. We serve a great, big, wonderful God. We serve a great, big, wonderful God.
And so we're going into, we have entered this new year and God has done so many things for us. He has made so many ways for us. He has opened doors for us. He has made opportunities for us. Everything he has made possible for us because he has our best interest. Bless the Lord. And so we're going to sing this song. You made a way. When our backs were against the wall and it looked like it was over, when things just feel it seems impossible. Be reminded that with God all things are possible. And so we're stepping into this new year with a heart filled with gratitude. Bless the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We don't deserve to be here in the region. If you think you deserve to be here, well, you're probably a fool yourself. But we don't deserve to be here. We don't deserve God's goodness, God's mercy. But He continues to be faithful. Because God is God not changing on him, no go back on him word. God continues to be faithful. Even when we ourselves don't remain faithful in our Christian walk, God remains faithful and he has never left us. Ever, never, ever left us. And so we're going to sing this song. Bless the Lord. And I just want you to open your hearts and your spirits and just worship God and thank God for all that he has done for you. You could have been dead in a virgin. You could have been dead long time ago. But because of the grace, the mercy, and the keeping power of Jesus, we are here in our right minds. Bless the Lord to lift up his name. Hallelujah. Standing here, not knowing how we'll get through this test. But holding on to faith.
we look to you, our hope and salvation, when we will not look within ourselves for the solution, because the solution does not lie within us, but it lies within you. And so mighty Yahweh, God of our salvation, Emmanuel who is always with us, we pray that you will take every aspect of the service in charge this morning. Lord God, I pray that you will send forth, Lord God, a rain of word for the time and the season. And I pray, Almighty God, when we would have left here, Lord God, every heart that gathers in this building would have an accountance, Lord God, with you. So Father, take full control this morning. We are careful to give you the glory. We are careful to give you the honor. We are careful to give you the praise. And we say, speak, Holy Spirit. Have thine own way. Walk up and down in the service. And be with us in a special way as we give and submit everything to you. In Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Finally, my brethren, rejoice in the Lord to write the same things to you. To me, indeed, it is grievous, but for you, it is safe. Beware, Beware of dogs, Beware of evil workers, Beware of concision. For we are the concision, for we are the circumcision which worship God in the Spirit and rejoice in Christ Jesus. And have no confidence in the flesh. Though I might also have confidence in the flesh, if any man think that he have thereof, he might trust in the flesh by the word. Circumcised the eighth day of the stock of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, and he, an Hebrew of the Hebrews, as touching the law of Pharisees. And certain zeal persecuting the church, touching the righteous which is in the law, leaders. But what things were gained to me, those I counted lost for Christ. Yea, countless, and I count all things for loss for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things, and I will not have them for and be found in him, not having my own righteousness, which is of the law, but that which is through the faith of Christ, the righteousness, which is of God by faith. That I may know him, and the power of his resurrection, and the fellowship of his sufferings, being made conformable unto his death. By if by any means I might attain into the resurrection of the dead. Not as though I have already attained, even though I were already perfect, but I follow after, in that I am again, that for which also I am again. Brethren, I count not myself, I call not myself to have apprehended what self but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before. I press towards the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Let us therefore, as many as 
as imperfect, be thus minded, and if anything be not always minded, God shall reveal even this unto you. thanks for this a new year a new day the first Sunday of the year where we come before God to partake of his table and to give him our heart a lot of persons have made resolution and they have not kept it but I for one I don't believe in making resolution all I want is for God to have his way in my life all I want is for God to be transparent in my life I want to be transparent before God and man I want to live my life. To, that is my resolution. That I draw closer to God this year. And I will be available to be used in Jesus' name. We now invite the bishop to come with the announcement and the welcome. Praise God. Shall we continue to bless the Lord? Yeah. Give him another praise. Hallelujah. Indeed, it's a new year and I want to wish you a happy new year. Some of you were in church this morning and uh, it's never too much to tell you all of the blessings that, you know, God has in, in store for us and uh, really wish of him the very best because God desires the best for us. He wish above all things that we will prosper and be in good health. And indeed for this year, I trust that the joy of the Lord will be our strength. The joy of the Lord will manifest in our lives. And we will live a life in the joy of the Lord. Hallelujah. I pray that we will never lack and we will never go wanting. Because the Lord is our shepherd. And he will lead us through this year. I greet you in the mighty name of Jesus. And I trust that as you have come to the house of the Lord today, that you give him your all. And as you go through this year, pledge to give him your very life because that's what he seeks. He needs you and he wants to save you and make you whole. I want to greet our moderator for today, Minister Young. Bless the Lord for her. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. We also want to acknowledge our leaders who are here. Our senior pastor, Reverend French, who will be sharing the word with us momentarily. Shall we bless the Lord? Praise God. We also want to acknowledge our senior pastor, Reverend Joy Williams. Give a praise for her this morning. Hallelujah. We want to also acknowledge our deacons, Deacon French and Deacon Carter. Praise God. We give God thanks for you this morning. And all our lay ministers, Minister Monroe, who gave the opening prayer, and Minister Adam Sewell, seated on the choir. Praise God. And all of God's people, we give God thanks for you this, this morning. And the steward is off to also light, and we pray his strength and for safe journey mercies as he continues to do the master's work. I want to greet all our brothers and sisters in Christ today. And I trust that your hearts will be refreshed and you'll be blessed today as you give God your best praise. Hallelujah. Greetings to our musicians. Hallelujah. Greetings to our musicians. God bless you this morning. And all the children who are in our midst, we are so grateful to see you. And I trust that you'll continue to come on out and worship with us in our Sunday services. I know you enjoy your segment, but I want you to continue to come and enjoy all aspects of the worship that is extended to you. Amen. Give a big round of applause for all the children this morning. Praise God. And we want to acknowledge those who are visiting with us this morning. Praise God. We have Harmony with us. Just stand Harmony so we can acknowledge you. Bless the Lord. That's from the Adam's clan. So grateful that you are here this morning. And Nicole and uh, Yes, yes, still with us, and we give God thanks for you. We also want to acknowledge our friends from the community. Miss Andrea, thank you so much for coming. Miss Watson, long time I've seen you, but you're starting the year well. And we give God praise. Just wait here, Miss Watson. 
Some people don't even remember you. <laughs> Bless the Lord. Miss Oliver continues to come. We pray and we continue to just give God thanks for you as you continue to fellowship with us here. Praise God. We're happy to see Sister Jude. Yes, and her coming is becoming more frequent. Shall we bless the Lord? She's gradually coming back home. Shall we praise the Lord? Amen. And we continue to pray her strength as she made the decision to follow Christ. Amen. I want to also acknowledge that gentleman behind the um, sister, sister Millie, that gentleman in the middle here, just wave your yeah, hand, sir. Bless the Lord. Thank you so much for coming and inviting this stand as we make you welcome. We're always happy to see men in the house of the Lord. Shall we bless the Lord? Shall we bless the Lord? Yes, sir, I'm waiting for you to stand. We want to acknowledge you officially this morning. Yes. Give him a big round of applause. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. And we trust that you will continue, you know, to give God your best because that's what he desires of each of us this morning. Welcome, Shanice. Thank you so much for coming. Praise God. And also, Jackie, quite comfortable behind the Deacon Carter. Almost missing her. And Jody, so grateful to have our community friends coming out. Miss Bennett. Happy to see you. Miss Ben was the first one to be in church last night. And she's here again this morning. Shall we bless the Lord? And sometimes we as young people, when we turn up for service in the night, we can't make it the next morning. But she's here this morning and we give God thanks for you. We continue to pray that God will give you strength to endure. And indeed, he's able. So greetings to one, greetings to all. I hope I have missed anyone. And Oh, Sandy and, and Candy. Bless the Lord, I'm going to ask them both to stand. These are the Stuart's children. Praise God. Happy New Year to you. And I trust that you will be blessed as you worship with us. And we look forward to seeing you more often as we go through this year. Also, Sister Sherling's daughter is with us at another time. I'm going to ask her to stand as well. She's with her baby. Yes. Please stand. Give her a big round of applause. Hallelujah. So many visitors this morning. But the Lord of hosts is also with us. And the God of Jacob is our refuge. So be strengthened today and be blessed. And know that the power of God is with you. I also want to acknowledge those who have joined us online. And those who will watch the program later on. God bless you. Happy New Year to you as well. We also want to, by way of prayer requests, announce that Sister Jillian is asking for prayer for her grandson, Damari, who is not well. He has, um, he is troubled with asthma, but God is able to deliver. We pray for healing as he embraced this new year, that he will embrace the healing touch of the Lord, and he will be made whole. Also, the mayor who is coughing badly, we want to put before the Lord today and believe God for healing. God is able to heal young people and he's able to heal those who are elderly. So let us continue to put our trust in him because he never fails us yet. Praise God. We want to announce that the Jamaica Youth for Christ will be having the Genesis Praise Fest this evening starting at 5 p.m. And it will be at the Ryan Williams Entertainment Center. And we're looking forward to Model Church supporting as usual. The cost for the concert is $2,500 for adults pre-sold. $3,000 at the gate. I have some tickets available. Please let me know at by the end of the service, those who will be going. VIP, $5,000. And the children under 12, $1,000. That's the main announcement for today. I trust that you will give your best support to that. And uh, really, if you cannot go and you can contribute to the event, God bless you in your efforts. Amen. The services for the week continues. We will have Bible study this Thursday coming up. And we want you to continue to remember that and support the Bible study. On Sunday night, Sunday will be our week of fasting and so on saturday night the seventh we want you to start your fasting at midnight and you continue to midday each day until saturday uh, midday 
On Friday night, we will be having a grand all-night prayer meeting. Praise God. We want everyone to be out for that. Remember, all the nights of the week, we will be here just lifting up the Lord, crying out to Him, believing Him for breakthrough in our own lives and in the life of the church and in the life of the community and in our nation. So we want you to be ready for this time. It's a time for war. It's a time for work. And it's a time to trust God to do the impossible for us. So if you are doubting, go by the home. Those who come with faith, believing, come on out and lift up prayers to God because he will hear us and he will respond. Praise God. By way of birthday, Raja William celebrates his birthday today. And so as a church, we're going to officially sing for him. And the children, you'll be sharing with him later in cake. Oh, Reverend Williams, I will forget the cake. <laughs> Shall we bless the Lord? So, uh, Brother Rick, uh, Raji will be sharing cake with the young children this after, they are later on. So, God bless you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Raji. Happy birthday to you. And may the good Lord bless you. May the good Lord bless you. So brother, break our no perplexing no more. We want to have a nice time this year. Shall we bless the Lord? God bless you today as we head back to our moderator. In Jesus' name. Jesus loved the children. Here on earth in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. I 
I will not suffer. I will not beg for bread. The Lord is my provider. I will not beg for bread.
tribulation come, will you have your yes? My God, what a song this morning. Oh, it has ministered to me this morning. This is real ministry. Praise God. We are saying yes, Lord. At the top of the year, you can have my yes. I will go, Lord Jesus, wherever you are taking me. Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you very much, choir, as you sing. Oh, may the Lord bless you. May the Lord bless you. Hallelujah. May you sing under the anointing of the Holy Ghost. Yes, this is a new beginning. And the Lord is depending on you. You are called to sing. Sing. Praise God. And give the Lord your yes. Yes, it's going to take some sacrifice, but give the Lord your yes and watch him work for you. Hallelujah. 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 Praise your name, Jesus. Glory to God. You may be seated. I bless the Lord this morning that our church doors are still open and the people have a mind to come and worship. Oh, just put your hands together for yourself this morning. Yes, some people were, were not at the wake up list. Some are in the hospital, some are in prison. But you are free this morning to come and worship. And there's freedom in Christ. I just want to bless God. Oh, for all that he has done in our, our lives throughout 2022. And last night and into this morning, Bishop Williams preached... You know, a powerful, timely, and relevant message. Breaking free. And there are some things that we need to break free from so that we can give our yes to Jesus. Praise God. And if you miss that message, you need to go back. Go back and just go timely through that message. Because God has a word for the church. That's, that was a word for the church. So go back and look at what God is saying to us as a church and people. Praise the name of Jesus. And can I tell you that last night as we met, you know, to celebrate God and to give him thanks for a new year, God confirmed the word that he gave me for today. Yes, even as Bishop Preacher was saying, why would Bishop be preaching out the message? But the Holy Spirit is always right. The Holy Spirit is always on time. And the Holy Spirit is always relevant to praise God. Yes, he, the Holy Spirit doesn't get outdated and historical. He, Jesus is an historical Jesus, but God is an all-time God. Yes, and I praise God this morning. And so I just want to spend some time to talk to you about, uh, you know, pressing uh, into Christ-like living. Praise God. And as you go with me through the word this morning, you will realize that God is indeed speaking to the church right here at Model. As Bishop spoke last night and into this morning about knowing Jesus and becoming even more intimate with him, God is saying you must press on into Christ-like living. That's how we're going to make it into 2023. We cannot go alone. We must go with Jesus Christ. And our life must be a model and example of who he is. We must be progressive in our salvation experience. We must hold on to the progress that we have already made. Praise God, but we must keep pressing forward. Is that a yes, church? Hallelujah. Praise God. God is counting on your yes. This is a time for our New Year resolutions and all kinds of setting goals and objectives. And people like to, you know, run into the New Year with a whole bag of goals. But this year, if there's only one thing in your bag, you must have that thought, that objective, that goal to press on with Jesus Christ. The book of Philippians is where the message comes from this morning. And it was written by Paul. And we know that Paul's life is very colorful. Paul lived a colorful life. And he wrote this letter to the church at Philippi when he was in prison, in chains. And, and, and so Paul had 
address the Christians there. And there were problems in the church. Let me tell you, problems will always be in the church because we wrestle not against flesh and blood. Praise God, we are wrestling against the work of darkness. But the Holy Spirit is always present. Praise God, and where light is, then it must dispel the darkness. So darkness will always be around. But the gospel of Jesus Christ is the remedy. The gospel is the light of our salvation. It is our deliverance. And where there is darkness, it is the church that is going to go in and disrupt and dissolve and discard that darkness. Praise God. And so Paul wrote this letter from prison. Paul suffered more than any one of us. You know, when, when I think about the life of Paul, I believe that, you know, if we could ever suffer, you know, we will never be able to come to that kind of suffering that Paul experienced in his body and in his life. And Paul longed for a resurrection, not just a resurrection bodily from the grave, but moral resurrection. You see, Paul was steeped in the law. And Paul, right here in Philippians, he outlined his resume. And he expressed who he was. Praise God. But Paul was writing, and Paul was saying that I want to be nearer to Jesus Christ. And that is what makes the difference. So Paul emphasized the proper focus during times of suffering. He begins the chapter with a reminder to rejoice in the Lord. Who are we going to rejoice in in this new year? We must rejoice in the Lord. Our rejoicing is in Jesus. Our rejoicing is not in our job. Our job is not where we look to for our income. Our income, our everything that we need is in Jesus. And we must rejoice in him. Our rejoicing is in Jesus. For if in this life we have our hope, we are going to be miserable believers. But our life is in with Christ in God. And so Paul encouraged the believers in Philippi to rejoice in the Lord. The joy of the Lord is truly our strength. He also warns them to be aware of the false teachers. Be aware of anything that can run counter to the gospel. Paul warns them about that as we move into a new year and as we keep on moving progressively in our salvation experience. We have to look out, we have to remove the veil from our eyes and we must see in the spirit. That's where we have to live, that we are with, that's where we have to cap up in the spirit so that we can see all the things that are not right. So Paul asked his own spiritual resume, note his reasons to boast in the flesh. He announced to his readers all those experiences theologically and also all those scholarships that he has been. And the fact that he is an Hebrew of Hebrews, he was circumcised on the eighth day. Yes, like any Jew. To be a Jew, you must be circumcised in the flesh of the foreskin. That makes you a full-fledged Jew. And Paul was saying, I am a Jew. Full thoroughbred Jew. I was circumcised. I am an Hebrew. Yes. And I am of the Pharisee sect, one of the strictest sect of the more of the Jewish religion. And it, it, it is also that sect is steep in the Mosaic law. So Paul followed the law to a T. He lived his life, you know, following Yahweh. He thought that he was on the right track. Praise God. And last year, some of us felt that we were on the right track. But today, today is a time to do some stock taking and to remember where we were last year and see how much farther we can push ourselves to reap a Christ-like life. So Paul, when he looked back, you know, he realized that he had, he had attained much, but still he did not attain the, 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 the part of, of life that will make him an eternal Christian, an eternal, that will give him eternal 
joy and will make him one with Jesus and become one in fellowship with Jesus Christ. So Paul's point is, if any human being could be justified by the law, he could be, and yet he considered all of that as rubbish. He considered all of his achievements and attainments as dumb. You know what dumb is? He considered all of that as wasted in comparison to receiving Christ. Nothing was more important than knowing Jesus Christ. So Paul left only one thing on his resume. Praise God. And Sister Shaboya last night, she said that, you know, there, there, she, she thought about just setting goals for this year. But on the top of the list, that the only thing that's there on her list is that she become very close to Jesus. Praise God. And that is where I want you to reach in your mind and thought as a church and a people. That is knowing Jesus. Worship that is based on faith and not law and regulations and rituals. Worship that is experiential. Worship that takes you into the very heart and mind of Jesus Christ. Pressing on to Christ-like living. When everything else fails, that's what's going to keep us. When we can't find a sister or a brother, that's what's going to keep us when we become one with Jesus Christ. Christ-like living. What is that? What is Christ? -like? What is? What does it mean to live like Christ? What am I saying? I'm saying that today, as we embark on a new year, Christ-like living is all about holiness, separateness, yes, and becoming oh that people that is that belongs to the Lord, that people that God has chosen for His own, that. People that are sacred and, and, and uh, worship that is sacred. People that are pure in thoughts and hearts. I'm talking about moral character. I'm talking about freedom from sin. That's all you're going to say yes. Because if you are not free from sin, if you don't have a pure heart and a clean mind, then you cannot say a, a yes to Jesus all the time. Your yes is bound up in who you are as a believer of Jesus Christ. If ever a time that the church needs to be closer to Jesus, it is now. You don't need a candle to show you that. The signs are foretelling in the sky. It's everywhere. It's in your home. It's in your community. It's in the church. When I was a child, church was always on fire, people moving. Things have changed drastically. The world has become a global place. It has become a knowledge-based place. Oh, knowledge is at your fingertips. And so many things are happening. It has become self-centered, humanistic. It has taken on the God is there, the theology and ideology. You know, because in the past, God, people depended on God to work miracles. They understand it. I don't really need God because I can make this ship, I can fly that plane, I can move from one place to another. I study medicine and do research. Church, I want you to wake up to the time that we are living in. Christ like living is what is our, we should be our hallmark as a Christian. And so I want to read a portion of the scripture from Philippians 3. And we want to look at Paul's goals. Paul said in verse 7, I once thought these things were valuable. After he outlined his resume, opened his, you know, maybe that was a three or four page resume, and he outlined everything, all his experiences, and you know, persecuting of the church. That was also high 
on it as well. That was an experience until God knocked him off his horse on Damascus Road. So Paul says, I once thought these things were valuable. And I'm reading from the New Living Translation. But now I consider them worthless because of what Christ has done. Yes, everything else is worthless when compared with the infinite value of knowing Christ Jesus. There's value, infinite value in knowing Christ Jesus. Eternal value in knowing Christ Jesus. Everlasting value in knowing Christ Jesus. Paul says, I set those aside. I erase what's on my resume. It's not good enough anymore. All of that is just earthly achievement. But when I met Jesus, my life trajectory changed. Oh, and I see myself in a different way. Hallelujah. You met Jesus. Praise the name of Jesus. I remember a man who met Jesus. Zacchaeus met Jesus. Zacchaeus was a short man. Short in stature. And he wanted to see Jesus. Zacchaeus was a scammer. He was a thief. He collected taxes on behalf of the Romans. And he would add more so that his pocket would be full. Oh! Jesus. So he climbed the sycamore tree. He said, I must get a glimpse of this man. I've been hearing about him. And the crowd won't let me even to walk with them. You know, we can be very judgmental. Yes, and we stereotype people. And yes, even the thieves, sometimes they want to come and know Jesus. But we are so high-minded. As a church, we won't give them a chance. But Zacchaeus had a strategy for how he was going to see Jesus. He said, I'm short physically, but spiritually I want to grow tall in Jesus. So he climbed up into the tree. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Do you know Jesus knows where you are? Jesus knows where you are right now. And so when Jesus gets to the place, he read the heart of Zacchaeus. And Jesus came to the tree. He looked up Hallelujah. He knew Zacchaeus' name. Ah, oh, mighty God of Daniel. I'm talking about Christ like living. When Jesus got to that tree, he looked up and he said, Zacchaeus, come out of the tree, Zacchaeus. No more time to hide, Zacchaeus. You want to see what I look like, but I want to change your life for good. Hallelujah. Oh, can you identify with Zacchaeus today? I can identify with Zacchaeus. Oh, some people were afraid to approach me. Oh my God, but Jesus, he approached me. Oh, and he spoke to me. He saw my heart. Longing for a place in him. And he reached out. So Jesus is stopping by at Mother Church today. And he sees where you are. He knows where you are. He knows your intention. He knows what you want to do. Jesus said, Zacchaeus, come down. For today, I'm going to have dinner with you. Oh my God, the great king of kings didn't wait for an invitation from Zacchaeus. Zacchaeus was rich, you know. He had money, but he was poor spiritually. But Jesus said, Zacchaeus, I want to spend some time at your house where nobody else wants to go. I'm coming home with you, Zacchaeus. Oh, I'm going to eat, eat with you because I want you to experience the love that I have for you. Hallelujah. Oh, I don't know who is lacking in love. Who have left you? Who have abandoned you? Who said to you that you are not going to amount to anything good? That you are just a thief? That you are just a robber? That we don't want you? Oh my God. Oh, Jesus was criticized because Bishop, he went home to have supper with Zacchaeus the thief. And they said if he only was a true king, he would know that this man is a robber and a thief. But can I tell you that Jesus 
Jesus knows us uh, even more than the naysayers. And let us look at the height of Zacchaeus. Uh, I'm telling you the story because this is where I'm going. Oh, that Zacchaeus spent time with Jesus, Sister Cherry. Oh, Zacchaeus didn't, Jesus didn't want to bring up his past, you know. Oh, he just went to eat with him. He just went to commune with him. He just stopped by him and stayed in his house. And the presence of the living God started to work in the heart of Zacchaeus. And Zacchaeus said, Lord, if I have taken anything, what is a thief? You have taken the people money. What Zacchaeus said, Lord, if. Oh, my God. I've defrauded any man. I want to return it four times as much. That's Christ like living. What has happened in the past? Yes, you can clear it up. When Jesus stop by your house, it will not be judgmental. When Jesus stop by you, it will not be one who will mock you and insult you and bring up your past. But it will draw so close to you. They were strict on law. 
but they didn't love people. They didn't have mercy and they didn't have compassion. And that is why Paul could persecute the church. First person, he held the clothes of those who stoned Stephen to death. Everybody put their clothes at his feet while Stephen was stoned to death. And James was killed with the sword. And they went after Peter. But I tell you that nobody can take you out. Yes, before your time. Praise Jesus. Paul says, rather, I become righteous through faith in Christ. For God's way of making us right with himself depends on faith. I want to know Christ and experience the mighty power, his resurrection power. I don't want to be called a Pharisee and a Hebrew of Hebrews and all, all about circumcision. But I want to know Jesus. I want to experience that power that knocked me off my horse and spoke to me. I want to experience that same power that crippled me. I could not go to Damascus. Oh my God, the light was so blind in reverend joy. He could not see. God stopped him and said, Paul, who are you? You are persecuting me. Me, my people, you are persecuting. Don't worry about the enemy. Because God will get them. Vengeance is mine. And Paul says, who are you, Lord? Who are you, Lord? Two questions he asked. Who are you, Lord? And what do you want me to do? He had an experience. Yes, a little bit. And then Jesus gave him the fullness of it. Our uh, brethren, if you want Jesus, Brother Ryan, if you want to move from where you are, you have to begin to desire it. Like Zacchaeus, climb up in the tree, man. And you have to begin to desire it. Paul says, who are you? Lord. And what do you want me to do? What will your yes, what will your answer be? Will it be a yes, Lord? I cannot go any further. I want to know you. So Paul says, I want to suffer with you too. No, I'm not just want to serve you, sir. I want to suffer with you. Oh my God. That is a kind of declaration that no ordinary people make. Because some Christians don't even want to suffer. As somebody says something about them, they're all up in arms. You know, as somebody doing something, we're up in our feelings. But Paul says, I want to suffer with you. What did Jesus went through? He was mocked, he was insulted, he was put upon, he was crucified, and he didn't do anything. Suffering is a part of it. He said, one way or another, I will experience the resurrection from the dead. Praise the name of Jesus. Paul says, I don't mean to say that I have already achieved these things. Yes, Paul was honest. He realized that he didn't achieve everything. And Paul desired holiness and intimacy with Jesus. Paul said the first thing to do in pressing on to Christ-like living is to acknowledge where you are. So verse 12 says, I don't mean to say that I have already achieved these things or that I have already reached perfection. Know where you are. Restart if you have to. But you have to do some shifting. You have to refocus. Your mind must change. Yo, the attitude is about your mind. You know that you can see people's attitude, but your attitude is really what you are thinking in the book. But you show on the outside. You want a new mindset. If Paul didn't realize where he was, he would sit back and do nothing to achieve his goal. That would have led him further from Christ. That would have led Zacchaeus away from Christ. He would have let his guard down and succumb to the temptation of the devil, of Satan. But Paul had a realistic understanding of you. Of, you, of, him, of himself. He knew where he was and where and what he wanted to be. How about you today? Church folks like to pretend. Yes, we church people, we know how to give a church testimony. Yes, and we know how to come in looking like, you know, we are Christians. We know how to sing.
sing churchy. We go out to talk churchy. Praise God. Yes, but by your fruit, we know who you are. Because what you are on the inside is what you will show on the outside. And you must have on the inside Jesus Christ and all the fruit of the Spirit. And then we will know that you have been with Jesus like Zacchaeus. We will see it in your compassion and we will see it in your mercy and we will see it in your love. In times like these, crime and violence, sickness, new outbreak of COVID-19 in China, the church needs to know where she is. The bride of Christ must be ready. Revelation 3, Jesus spoke to John and, and said, go with this message, go to the churches, seven churches represented. And he said of the church in Sardis, I know your works. You have a reputation to be alive, but you are dead. all the time. That's the power. 
Paul says, I want to lay hold of that for which Christ Jesus has also laid hold of me. In other words, Paul is saying, I want God's purpose for my life. Christ laid hold on Paul when he called him to apostleship. And Paul says, that's what I want. That's, that's in God's plan. That's my yes. That's what I want. Because who God calls, he already foreknew them and he justifies them and he glorifies them eventually. So Paul wanted to fulfill his apostolic ministry. How do you achieve that goal? You have to press on in the knowledge of Jesus Christ. And I'm coming though. We can be like Paul. We can be the best apostle. He was the best apostle. Best Christian we can be. The best worship leader. The best minister. The best pastor. The best evangelist. The best usher. What are your goals today? Paul's goals. Paul's goals falls under three headings. One, he wants to know Christ. Want to know Christ? Do you want to know Jesus? Paul wanted to know. Yes, he wanted to know the truth, like Bishop said last night. And if you know the truth, the truth will set you free. And the truth is Jesus. Praise God. And he also, secondly, want to experience the mighty power that raised up Jesus from the dead. He didn't just want that in his physical resurrection, but he wanted morally. There's a power of the mind that caused you not to sin when you have Jesus on the inside. You can choose not to lie, choose not to be cold to others. The power that's on the inside makes you do what God requires of you. And Paul says, I want to suffer with Christ. Those are his three goals. It takes sufferings too to reach the goal for Christ-like living. Don't we have the letter of Paul today to read from? Paul's ministry brought heavy suffering, imprisonments and persecution. He was kidnapped. He was beaten. He was accused in lawsuits. He was threatened. He was arrested. Many times arrested. And as to stand before the unjust judge. Yes, he was ridiculed, he was ignored, he was shipwrecked. And when he thought that that was all, as soon as he barely made it to land, a venomous viper came out of the fire wound that he was using to warm himself and beat him. Hallelujah! But because the power of God was on the inside of Paul, he just shake off that serpent, yes, into the fire. snuff out the Holy Spirit from our lives. Suffering is a part of it, but it's how we deal with it. And the third thing is that we must acknowledge the work that is involved in the goal, the resolution to achieve this goal. Paul says, one thing I do. It's just one thing left to do. One thing is left to do. I've seen it all, but one thing I do, one thing I'm going to do in 2020 is to press. I'm going to forget the past. I'm going to forget the hurt. I'm going to forget everything that I've been through. And I'm going to press on towards the mark of the higher calling in Christ Jesus. I want to forget the naysayers, the backbiters. I, I want to forget the legalists. I want to forget the pharisaical living and the self-righteous lifestyle. I want to forget who lied on me and cheated and hurt me. One thing I do I forget unfulfilled dreams and the pain of my Jericho walls that closed in on me. The Red Sea of fear, I'm going to abandon those. Affliction, I forget those. The fears, I'm moving away. One thing I do, I forget the past. I want to forget Egypt and the cucumber and the garlic. Yes, and I want to stop looking there and I want to stop looking through my rear view mirror. And I want to look through, yes, my windscreen. I'm keeping my eyes on the prize. For there's a prize. Paul says, I look forward to what lies ahead. Who is ahead of your church? Jesus is ahead of us. And if Jesus is before you, Jesus is the author and the finisher of your faith, the great healer, the great deliverer, the great freedom fighter. The great breaker of chains and yokes and systems and demonic struggles. He 
is the breaker, he is the breaker anointing that can carry you through 2023. Jesus is before you. And today, your yes should be, yes, Lord, I press on and I look forward to all the great things that you have in store for me. Good things and great and awesome things are ahead in 2023. I believe in my faith. Yes, I look forward by faith. Great things are ahead of us as individuals. Great things are ahead of us as a church. Because the Lord himself, Deuteronomy 31 says this, the Lord himself goes before you and will be with you. He will never leave you nor forsake you. Do not be afraid. And do not be discouraged. Instead, ask for the glory. Like Moses did. Lord, show me your glory. And so Paul pressed on to reach the end of the race and receive his heavenly prize. How about you this morning? There are new opportunities for us to fulfill in our ministry right here in Greenwich Town. Evangelism. You know, Paul was a great evangelist. Ministry lies ahead. Ministry is in some of us. But we have to forget the past. We have to move with Jesus. We have to know where God is taking us. We have to acknowledge where we are. And then ask, what do you want me to do, Lord? Some of you want to clear up some debts and have zero balances. It's possible. Some of you are desiring to pursue higher education. It's possible. Some of you want to go and do some great things, some things that you've been wanting to do, you know, write a book, do something, do a voluntary work, it's possible. Some of you want to work more in the church, it's possible. Whatever you want to do, it's possible, but you have to press on. It calls for a person to reach your goal. What will your future success be? How much time will you spend in prayer? How much time will you spend in worship? How will you measure that Mother Church is having a closer walk with God. How do we measure that? We have to know where we are, know where we are projecting. I challenge us to desire holiness in this new year. Brethren, desire holiness. It's work, it's work, it's work. It's going to take work. It's a spiritual exercise, but you can make it. You can make it. Refocus your goals. Yes, and intimately know and experience Jesus this year. Know his mighty power and press on to Christ like living. Jesus is the way. If he is the way, then you can make it. He is the truth and he is the life. Yes, and he comes to challenge every lie of the enemy. If you walk with him and he's walking with you and he's in you, our church, then our lives will challenge every lie and every demonic attack and accusation from the enemy. Let us press on to know Jesus. In him are in all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. Do you need wisdom for this year? Amen. Just go in a little deeper with Jesus. First Corinthians chapter 1 says it. In him, Jesus, are hid. It's hidden in him, but you have to search deeply through the spirit to find it. In him are hid all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. So I, I, I encourage you, old church, grow up in grace. Grow in the grace of God. Grow in the knowledge of God. Grow in grace and in knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And be a church that God is pleased with. God bless you today. God bless you today. God bless you today. Clap your hands for Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let me see the hands of those who want a deeper walk. Hallelujah. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. And the Lord Jesus sees your hand just like he saw Zacchaeus. Yes, son. You are saying that, like Paul, I want to know you and the power of your resurrection. Praise God. And I want you to stand with me. Yes, as another faith identification. That this is what I want in you know, a Jesus. I want a deeper pressing into you. I want my prayer life to hit you. I want when I pray things happen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord, you can have my yes in 2023 because I'm going to press in with you. Praise God. Hallelujah. Father, I bless your name this morning. I thank you.
you for your church. Oh God, I thank you that you have not left your church. I thank you that you know your people by name and you know where they live. You know where we are. You know what we need and where we ought to be. Oh God, and even as these are standing as an indication in this new year that I want more of you, Lord. I want to say yes and mean it and keep my yes. Lord, you know their hearts today. You know the hindrances. You know what can keep them back. And I pray that in the name of Jesus Christ, that God, as you look at those raised hands, and as you see those hearts, that God, you will do like you did for Zacchaeus. Oh, mighty God, you will come so close, and you will change their lives. And God, you will make them the head and not the tail, above all they are not beneath. You will bless them beyond their imagination as they press into you. Oh, God, so that they can go and transform the lives of those whom they come in contact. Make your church a different church this year. Make Mother Church, oh God, a church that is, oh, just moving from one level to the other, scaling the utmost height, oh God, and catching a gleam of glory bright. Oh God, may our worship, oh, extend and, oh God, extend to the heavens, Lord, so that you can come down in glory and fill our temple. May our prayer life be of such that we move heaven, oh God, and move your hands towards us in the name of Jesus. Lord, remember the young people in this church. Remember those, oh God, who want more from you. Lord Jesus, I pray that the enemy will not have his coat over their lives. Just like you did for Daniel and his friends. Do it, oh God, for the youths in this church. And even the children who are growing up in the Sunday school. Mighty God, keep your hand on them and bless them in the name of Jesus. And Father, I pray for the adults, Lord, that we will be change agents. That we will be women and men who will help these young ones to come to their full potential in Christ. Oh God, that we will be a good examples over their lives. And we will not cause them to stumble. Mighty God, do great things for us this year as we desire it in the name of Jesus. God bless you, church. God bless you. Praise God. Hallelujah. I want to pray for those who, hallelujah, I want to pray for those who are not saved. And I know that some of you, you, you have been to the altar many times. Yes, and you know, you, 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 you just, you're just tired of coming. But there is a stronghold that's over your life. I want to pray for you even as we dismiss this part of the service so that we can spend time at the Lord's table. I want you to come to this altar. Yes, in 2023, and as a church, we are sealing you. We are, we are putting the blood of Jesus on you as a seal. And we are believing by faith that in this year, we don't know how God will do it, but you will climb your sycamore tree and you will come and know Jesus. Hallelujah! Now your faith will rise. I invite you to stand as I pray for you. There's no distance in prayer. You don't yeah, you can come to the altar, but Jesus sees you where you are today. And I just want to bless you today because oh, I'm a woman of faith and I know what prayer can do. And Jody and you know all the others, as you come, Jesus Christ knows where you are. And we are not here to judge you or condemn you. We know that there's a stubborn will and that's caused by the enemy. And so we want God to see you today as you walk out on your sycamore tree. And as you stop by, as you pray your prayer in your heart, that simple prayer. Just say something to God as I pray today. Father, I pray, what's your name? Jackie, what's your name? Shiona. Father, hallelujah. Lord, I present to you Jackie and Shiona and Jolian to you, Lord God. I present them to you as, you know, people, God, who you love. You love them with an everlasting love. Oh, God, and you came so that they may have life and have it in abundance. Today, Lord, they are in our space. They are in our church, this physical space, and they have come, oh God, to listen the word and to worship you. Oh, mighty God, that's a faith that takes them from their houses into your presence. I pray this morning, God, that there will be just one more step. Oh, God, I pray that whatever is the entrance, that God, you will destroy it in the name of Jesus. I pray this morning, Father, that you, oh God, will intercept everything that comes, oh God, to prevent them, everything and every system of oppression and every system 
them. Oh God, that keeps them back from you. I pray against them this morning. And I pray, God, that your blood, your rich blood, mighty God, will be poured on them as a mark, as a sign, oh God. Lord, just like you marked some people in scripture. Lord Jesus, put your mark on them in the name of Jesus until they surrender. Oh God, until Jackie surrender, until Shiona surrenders, until Jody surrenders. Oh my God, you know Jody by name. Oh mighty God, rescue her, Lord. Oh, I pray that Jody will know you in this time and she will not lose out in the name of Jesus. Father, I pray for the benefits as they are before us again. Lord, continue to provide for them. You said even in old age, they will be fat and flourishing. So bless them abundantly, mighty God, as they keep on coming. And bless uh, uh, Brother Bennett with strength as he takes care of his wife. Oh God, who's visually impaired. Bless him, God, even with strength and life, oh God, for his dedication as a husband. Touch his life and make it significant, uh, even in old age. Remember Brother Carter as he walked to this altar. Lord, I thank you for him and thank you for bringing him to us. And I pray, God, that he will rise even higher in this new year in the name of Jesus. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Praise God. So, Praise the Lord. Let us pray for the woman of God. Lord, we give you thanks for what you have done, Lord Jesus. I pray, God, as you have spoken to her, Lord, you replenish her. You'll give her strength in the name of Jesus. I pray you'll continue to give her visions and wisdom, Lord God, as she speaks, as she proclaims that you are Lord. Lord God, in the name of Jesus, touch her now from the crown of her head to the sole of her feet in the name of Jesus. And God, continue to encircle her right now in the name of Jesus. Lord, we give you thanks and we pray that you bless her abundantly in Jesus' name. And the church say, Amen. 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 Gonna go right into Lord Supper. At this time, we invite Bishop Williams to come. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. In your hand, Lord, I pray. Father's kingdom. 
And when they have sung a hymn, they went out into the Mount of Olives. Shall we praise the Lord? As we reflect on the word of the Lord here, we see Jesus having an encounter with his disciples. A special moment, a private moment, a moment when he ministered to them, a moment when he gave them emblems representing his, his own blood and his own body so that they will partake of these. Because he knew what would have happened just another day or two ahead. And as we look at it today, we are going into this new year Jesus is saying to us take off my body we cannot endure and go through the challenges that lies ahead without getting the strength and the nourishment that the Lord has for you and he's saying take off my body today he wants you to feast on him so that you can be strengthened you can be empowered and you can run the race with patience you can live the Christ like life that Reverend French has introduced to some of you who did not know. And for some of you who knew, he, you have been reminded today that God is calling us to a higher level. But as you come to this level, you cannot endure and sustain without that body of Christ. So he said, take of me, eat of me. Then he says, drink of this cup because this cup represents remission of sin. This cup represents the deliverance that will take you into a new realm and to a new experience. And he didn't just say, take a sip. Sister Julie said, drink all of it. So the want you to be partially cleansed. He wants us to be totally cleansed. So he said, drink all of it. Hallelujah. Because some of us like, like Peter would say, Lord, just my hands you need to be washed. Some would say, Lord, just wash my feet. But when we realize oh, how much we need the Lord, we say, Lord, not just my hand and my feet, but my entire body needs to be washed. And so he said, drink all of it. He wants to give us a comprehensive cleansing. He wants to give us a comprehensive deliverance. He wants us to be made whole totally today. And so as we share at this, at this table today, let us give up ourselves. Let us open up to the Lord, receive what he has in store for us so that we will not go through this year like how we have gone through years past, but we will go in a new experience. We will go with the joy of the Lord on our hearts. We will go with that deliverance and that power that the Lord will give to us. We will go with the cleansing oh, from every sin and every stain, every condemnation. We will go rejoicing. We will go with fresh thoughts and vision on our minds. We will go with the strength of the Lord, for his strength is made perfect in our times of weakness. I challenge us, church, that we will take of the Lord today and we will go. Remember that he will not drink of the fruit of the vine. He will not drink of this anymore in the physical until that day when he will drink it new with us. And so we are encouraged to share in these emblems, to be reminded of this experience, and to draw the spiritual strength that we need. But there is a day that is coming where we will drink it new with our God in his Father's kingdom. God bless you today. I'm so happy to see Sister Cecile, yes, coming another time to the table. Yes, at the start of the year, the first table spread, you are present and I give God thanks for you. And I declare that as you partake of the drink, oh, of, the, of, the, of, the, of, the, of the emblem today, you will drink all of it. And I declare that you will be healed and be made whole. Hallelujah. Everyone that has you have the different challenges that hinders you from serving God, you want to serve him. I'm saying drink all of it this today so that you can be delivered and you can experience a new touch and a new experience with the living God. Shall we praise the Lord? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm going to ask Sister Jillian to ask God's blessing on the emblems and after which the emblems will be served. I'm going to ask uh, Minister Young and uh, Minister uh, um, Adams to do the serving of the supper today and uh, let us partake and enjoy the presence of the Lord. Over to you.
So I invite our service to come and serve us quickly and we'll be singing thank you Lord for watching over us. Thank you Lord while we are being served. A new year has come along. Lord give us your wisdom and
who sat up your wine after the same manner. He took the cup, and when he had blessed it, he gave it unto them, and he says, Drink ye all of it, God bless you.
We declare that our lives will never be the same. We declare that there will be transformation. We declare that there will be a new experience with you. And God, we pledge allegiance to the Lamb today. As we run this year with you, we're going to run it with patience. We're going to look unto you, Lord, because you are the author and the finisher of our faith. I pray you bless your people today in their going out and in their coming in from this time forth and forevermore. And we thank you, God, for, for the strength that you have given to us. We thank you, God, for the healing that we have received. We thank you for your blessings that will overtake us like a flood. And we are going this year with you, Lord, saying thanks to you because you are worthy to be praised. Bless your people, mighty God, here, there, and everywhere. And as we go, let your presence go with us as we thank you and say all to you be all the glory, the honor, the dominion, and power both now and forevermore. Amen and amen. God bless you all. God bless you all. Praise God. Redeemed when the burden of sin was I. Oh, redeemed when my soul condemned to die. Before you go and have a wonderful year, read.